Hello everyone, welcome to this beautiful new day, this lovely video surrounded by nature. Um, I'm just relaxing here, taking a nice moment to connect with nature and the trees. And I thought I'd make a live video about um, something that so many of us are going through, and that is the objective of this video would be to help people to find emotional well-being and mental well-being regardless of what's happening around us regardless of the situation around us and regardless of our life situation so what usually happens in the human psyche or psychological state or ego or state of maturity or state of consciousness on planet earth in the previous times gone by and it's shifting enormously is we're always living in a state of wanting something different or waiting for something to happen and we're living in a state of dissatisfaction and disapproval of our past and our current state state of well-being or our current state of circumstances so we're basically invalidating ourselves or other people's emotions and ways and way of living we're, we're living in a state of programmed cultural judgment where we're judging ourselves to be not good enough or our life to be not good enough or we're judging someone else to be not good enough so we're living in a state of blaming and dissatisfaction and what is all also stemming from is the belief and the idea that things need to be different than the way they are in order for us to feel well and at peace so many things happen in life and humans seem to be, including myself, we're all working through this. But the thing is, we're living in a state of, of feeling and thinking that um, when this changes, when you change, then I'm going to feel okay. Then I'll feel at peace and my life is going to be starting to get better then. But the trick is to start to learn how to be more well and happy and in the flow. Or at least in a state of acceptance and peace regardless of what's happening so basically speaking um so it's not like when i get this house car girlfriend this job and um, this health when i get that then i'll be okay um, when when this person stops doing this then i'll be okay when i get out of this relationship then i'll be okay when i have more money then, then i'll be okay and um, when things when things seem easier or less complicated in my life then i'll be okay so we're always living in a state of conditions. It's a conditional state of living. And everyone, welcome to the video. I love you all. I can see some of the people who are watching. I was like, love you all and thanks for joining me. Ah, I'm really happy to be making this video right now in nature. So humans are always living in a, not always, but in the past, a state of needing and wanting things to be different. So... The reason why we do is because we have this programming and conditioning in us from our family and our culture and our childhood and our media. The televisions, the magazines, our parents, our brothers or sisters, our schoolmates, our teachers, the television. And basically what it does is we something happens and we don't like it. And instead of being okay with it, which is very possible, and accepting and loving and as as a lovely teacher Matt Khan says, love what is. Loving what is is with one of his books. And I haven't read it, but I'm pretty sure I'd highly recommend it because I trust that guy he's really connected to his inner being so well we, we judge someone we, we judge someone or ourselves to be bad like not good enough you should be better like it's almost like we're like a judgmental scornful god where we're in the clouds and someone isn't perfect and we're like like let's say for example someone gets emotional or triggered or someone doesn't respond the way we expect or want them to respond okay let's say they forget something in the shop that we ask them to get milk Okay, milk is such a bad example. <laughs> Almond milk. Okay, whatever. Anything. Or let's say they respond more emotional than we'd like. What happens is we freeze up emotionally and we start judging. Why we freeze up is because we do not validate and love them the way they are at the moment. So what we're doing is we're judging them to be bad or not good enough. Like, basically, another way of saying it is we're, we're looking down on them and thinking you should be better. Like, you're not good enough. You're responding badly. I wanted you to respond better than that. You're not good enough for me. And I'm pissed off at you as a result because you're not good enough. You're not good enough, basically speaking, is what we're saying. So 
and that's what we do about ourselves. We say to ourselves, oh, I'm not good enough. I should be better. I should be more advanced than I am. Oh, I should be in a different place. I should be better than this. I shouldn't be getting emotional. I shouldn't be triggered like this. I thought I was better. I thought I was further along my pathway than this. I thought I was a better person than this. All these judgments, everyone, can you hear them all? These are our programming. We have a whole system of programming, programming and thoughts and beliefs. Harmony says, hey, I'm in the trees right now too. Hello from California. Harmony Hansen, I'm in California. Are you beside me? <laughs> I'm filming up in California too. Amy says, hey, Owen, happy new year. Happy new year. Diana says, hey, love from my MI, Michigan, maybe? I don't know. <laughs> Tanya Lee says, spot on. Um, Tanya Lee says, I need to hear this reminder today. Right in this moment is exactly what I need to hear. Thank you. Well, I'm so happy to share. Cynthia says, hi. Ashling says, hello, Trees and Owen. Noree says, hello, how are you? I'm feeling, I'm feeling good at the moment, but I'm tired. I'm underslept, I'm tired. But somehow I decided to muster a video together because this has been on my, just in my energy, in, in my experience as well, to, to a degree. So I want to now talk about something a little bit different, everyone, okay? So the solution before I go on to something a bit different, and the next thing I'm going to talk about is perception and beliefs. Before that, I'm also going to talk about the solution to this issue is to, to look at our high emotions, which some people call triggers, our sudden upsurging strong emotions. We have to live in a state, uh, we have the opportunity, the invitation, let's put it that way, because have to sounds a bit strong, a bit harsh, a bit like pressure on us. We, there's no pressure on us anyway. So we have the invitation and the opportunity to live in a state of um, reflecting on our life, from time to time, like throughout the day. Uh, oh, even if we can do it, possibly during, we have these strong emotions coming up. These strong emotions from our past um, experiences and traumas and upsets and losses and harsh experiences, etc. So we have an opportunity to look at ourselves and say, oh, what's my belief there? What am I thinking? What is my perception? Like, how am I, what's my frameworking on this? What, how am I judging myself or another person? What, am I believing that they're not good enough or I'm not good enough? Am I putting this energy and this forceful like criticism, this this judgmentalism on them? Um, this like putting them down, like, you know? So once we can recognize these things, everyone, then we can start to change it within ourselves because we cannot change what we do not, are, are not willing or able to recognize. So step one is to be w willing to open up to a new framework within ourselves of looking at ourselves and observing ourselves and especially observing our emotions because emotions are as Teal Swan would say and as I would say as Abraham as, as a thousand people say Abrahams are our helpers they're our friends and they're our guidance because what happens before an emotion is usually if programmed or a deliberate thought a thought that we deliberately choose to think because I know it's going to manifest an emotion Emotions are manifestations of thoughts, and they're also manifest. They're also um. They're also there's also emotions stored in our body from past traumas and past experiences. Okay. So Zoe says, "I appreciate you and the things you talk about so much." Oh, thanks, Zoe. That's appreciate that. That's really lovely for me to hear. Thank you. Smile. Oh, Car Carmel says hello from Dublin, Ireland. That's where I'm from originally. I'm from Dublin. I I'm from Ireland. So. One lovely message I'd like you to take home with you from this video, everyone, is that emotions are manifestations of thoughts. So, for example, if I think the thought, you're not good enough, I'm not good enough, let's say I don't even know I'm thinking, that's why emotions are so important, everyone. So if you, if you catch yourself feeling off and upset and wobbly, that is a signpost to say, look at your thoughts. What, are your, what is your perception and beliefs? So that's why it's essential to look at emotions as divine messengers, our friends. So why am I feeling this emotion? What am I believing or thinking? And that's and if the more our beliefs and thinking is true and in alignment with our higher self, our inner being, our deeper connection to who we truly are, that's when our emotions will be will be pleasant and happy and appreciative and f fun, playful, ha light emotions like excitement and love and gratitude and eh, happiness and joy. That's what joy is. State of general prolonged or general well-being joy is like happiness except it's just words but like joy is like elongated big happiness that's long-lasting and not dependent on state of circumstances 
For me, joy is like happiness and peace put together and it comes deeper from within and it's less dependent on things being perfect in your life or people being perfect. Happiness is more like, you know, I got, it, I got what I wanted and I became happy for a while and then I went unhappy because I got taken away or I lost it. Could be a person or a thing. <laughs> and what comes along with this type of idea I'm talking about called happiness, you can call it whatever you want, you don't have to be strict about it, is then the fear or the worry is going to be t you're going to lose it. But joy is much more stable and long-lasting and powerful. So Carmel says, yay, you're Irish, <laughs> yay. Um, Amy says, I am definitely off today lately. And that's okay, like, Amy, I'm going to give that a like because it's, I'm tired. It's good to recognize we're off. And it's good to like dive deep and check out our thoughts and beliefs and perceptions. And we're either off because we're physically unwell, or like for example, not enough sleep, ate too much of the of food that doesn't agree with us or something like that or we could be emotion, uh, mentally off which creates the emotion so, so ment, mind activity memories focusing thinking and, visual, and visualizing that all manifests emotions so beliefs thoughts and manifest emotions by the second so becoming aware of your thoughts and beliefs and what you're thinking, your attitude and mood, that is the most essential thing to do in life, in my opinion. Because from this, you're going to create an emotion, and from every emotion, you create an inspired or an uninspired, despired, upward spiraling or downward spiraling behavior. So you know when you say or do stuff that makes things spiral upwards with your relationships or life, or if they go down the drain, down the toilet hole, you know, <laughs> whatever. Sorry for all the wobbles, everyone. It's hard to keep this still. So, uh, yeah, so be ch reflecting and becoming like more deliberate and careful with what you choose to think. And then when you, when you lose yourself in unconscious automatic beliefs and thoughts and your emotions remind you of these triggering moments, then you're able to suss yourself out and rethink and check out your beliefs. And you're able to reframe if, if this is a positive experience or a negative experience. So that's probably the number one, like one of the number one um, beliefs we can have. Like, let's say you have an argument with someone. Are you now telling a story that this is like a really negative experience? Oh no, like I messed up, they messed up. Oh no, it's the end of the world, which creates manifested emotion from that thought and that belief. Or you could say, okay, you know what? This experience right now, even though it's challenging, there are benefits to this. It's come into my life for a reason. There are positives to take. What can I learn about myself? How, how can this benefit me? What do I have to take away? Because there's a gift in every experience. And if you're willing to unravel it, we can say these things to ourselves and we feel much lighter in our emotions. So then we can learn the lessons way easier. So, Harmony says, so on point, very important for me to hear right now. Thank you. Hi, uh, yay, Cheryl. Hi, Owen, having trouble with the connection. We'll have to watch the replay. Okay. Carmel says, happiness comes from happenings, right? Yeah, you could, that's a way of putting it. You know, we don't have to get too strict over the words, but that's like a general idea. I don't mind saying whatever, but lately I've been resonating with the word joy. I like the word joy. I feel I've been experiencing more joy. <sighs> okay. So, Amy says, feels like downward lately. Need it to change direction. I'll give that a like, because I like people recognizing the, the emotions that don't feel so good. They're lovely emotions, that's okay. So emotions point us towards like what we may wish to need, uh, wish to change in our life. Emotions also point us towards having non-met needs or having just a negative perception on our needs that haven't been met also. Because like, let's say you have a need that's not been met, okay? I'm hungry, I'm really hungry, I need some food. Oh, I'm getting tired, oh, I need more sleep. How much do I really need more sleep? And then we start viewing it negatively, this type of perception. Then we manifest, because we don't just manifest our life and what we do, our job, our work, but we manifest all of our emotions that's the primary first the manifestation is the most critical and most important and that's what most so many people like don't talk about and that's that's lovely and i enjoy like i'm just saying i wish i'm more teachers would talk about the importance of manifesting emotions it's the number one so that's why i'm highlighting in this video it's definitely not a criticism towards anyone of course but it's an observation and it's a desire a desire for more clarity in everybody um, I want us to understand the importance of our mind and how powerful it is and how a little shift in our perception, viewing things more positively 
uh, more gratefully and lovingly and heart-centeredly totally shifts our whole life and all of our relationships. Then we manifest a new emotion. Then, from, then after that, we manifest a new sentence. We manifest a new body language. We manifest a new tone of voice. We manifest a new action-inspired mm -hmm. stuff. And then we shift and change our relationships, our life. And we do it from a state of peace, much more peace. Sure, we can still feel a little bit wobbly or off, but it's like from, we just can go up the ladder of vibration. Loving, heart-centered thoughts. Um, more like va validating ourselves. I validate. Say to yourself now, I validate and love myself. I validate and love myself. I accept, love and appreciate. I accept, I validate where I am in life right now. Like, I know. Put your hand on your heart and say it, you know. I know I'm not, I don't have everything that I want. <laughs> I know I'm not exactly where I want to be. But that's okay. And I accept and love myself for where I am. And not only that, but everyone else is the same. <laughs> everyone else has things they want and don't want. And it's just a matter of how we perceive and deal with it. Through this line of thinking and perceiving. So that's that. So, um, Cynthia says I like joy too. Everyone likes joy. <laughs> I agree. I love you saying that because it's just nice to hear us talk about joy. Eh? I want joy. You want joy. I accept, love and validate everyone else for where they are at the moment also. And where we all are at the moment, this is a, this, you can say this to yourself, where we all are at the moment is changing and um, it's only a temporary thing when we all have different emotions and little by little we work through it all and we all do our best. And we can love and appreciate us all doing our best. Even though it may not be perfectly smooth, it becomes smoother and more harmonious. It becomes easier and better and lighter and friendlier, easier to deal with. But ultimately this is how we perceive what's, what, we, what we're dealing with. It's not the outer thing, it's our inner way of perception, perceiving, dealing, connecting to our inner being. So when we connect to the truth and our inner being, we feel peace. And all these words are put together today, they're all a way of, it's all a way of perceiving and connecting to our heart and thinking. Ah, okay. So let me see, what else is happening? Crystal, Crystal Crisp says, My dog has just passed over this summer. This summer name is Joy. This summer. It is a beautiful word. I agree, Joy is more sustainable than happiness. Yeah. Uh, Melanie, oh, I love you, Melanie. Melanie says, Thank you. I love you, Melanie. You're so, such, a, such a beautiful person, friend to me. I love you. You really enriched my life with, with your. Mad, mad beautiful energy and Tanya Lee says your reality is a matter of perception absolutely 100% it's all about perception people have been at peace in prison Pe rich people have been miserable and didn't want to live anymore famous people who you think have the best life ever they can be they can sometimes kill themselves bless them you know it's all about perception it's not what you have it's about how you perceive what you have it's not about what you don't have it's about how you perceive what you don't have how you deal with it and live with it Okay, exactly. Carmel says a lovely affirmation. I might not be where I want to be, but also I'm not where I used to be. You see, that's a better, it's a step up of vibration. So you're not saying, oh yes, I have everything I want to be, I'm perfect in life. You're not pretending that, but you're saying I'm better than I was before, and that makes us feel a little bit better. It's all about finding relief, everyone. If you can keep finding thoughts that make you feel a little bit better, if you can keep finding thoughts that make you feel a sense of relief, you're going to do so much better in life. So that's your job, just to find a thought and a way of perception that makes you feel a bit better in life and feel relieved. So Amy says, thank you. Definitely need to hear this right now. Sending you love and smile zone. Thanks, Amy. Thanks, lots of love and appreciation. Tanya Lee says, acceptance sets you free. That's true. So if we can accept, okay. So I'm going to get onto another point before I finish this video. And that is about perception um, instead of what's just happening it's how we perceive it okay so so what happens with, tr with triggers and our programming and our conditioning is somebody does something okay or says something or they don't do something that we wanted or they don't say something that we were expecting and what happens is an emotion can arise it's like for example let's say somebody says um, are you a drug addict <laughs> okay because I'm just using a very blunt example so, some people go, oh, 
How dare you ask me that question? Do you think I'm a drug addict? You have no right to call me a drug addict. You you drink and smoke yourself, and here you are. Or, or let you don't just because you've never touched a drug in your life doesn't give you the right to come down and judge me. Okay. <laughs> So that's an example of a per perception, perceiving someone to be judging you when all they did is ask you a question. They could be curious, they, want, they might want to help you, they might, they might be a drug addict themselves, they might want to connect with you, they might want to learn more about you. They might be, it might be just as pure innocence and curiosity like a child, or else they might have thought that you were, or somebody said that, that you were, and they got confused and they want to find out the truth, so they just ask a question like, like, but another other ordinary questions could be something like, um, "Are you tired?" or like, "Are you tired?" or "Do you need some re Do you need some rest?" or um, "Did you eat my dinner?" or "Did you see my lunch?" <laughs> but like, anyone could think, "Ooh, you think I I took your lunch, do you?" <laughs> do you ever have these like things in life, eh? <laughs> so that's the difference. If if we can just check in and recognize, like, what are we judging? Are we doing this this programmed judgments, or is someone else? having these program judgments and misunderstandings. It's an assumption. There's books written about like don't make assumptions. For example, The Four Agreements by Don, Don Miguel Ruiz talks about one of the four essential things in life is don't make assumptions. So this is, an assumption is a, is a form of inaccurate perception. Or it could, be, it could be accurate, but it's a form of perception. Thinking or judging, it's believing something that you don't know to be true. So that's what an assumption is. So an assumption is a thought. Perception is a thought, it creates an emotion. Thoughts manifest emotions. So we have to check in. And part of waking up and ascending is knowing and learning about our own assumptions and our perceptions in this regard and our own triggers. So our triggers or our emotions are our, our helpers so we can learn about our mind, our assumptions, our perceptions, our way of thinking, our, our belief systems that have been programmed. We're like a circuit board. We've got like loads of programs running. We have these automatic beliefs and thoughts running. So that's what awakening is. It's stepping out and looking in on our program states, our, 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 our circuitry, our patterns, our belief systems, our behaviors, especially our thoughts. But even our behaviors are manifest manifestations of our thoughts the same way as emotions are. So we can either look at our emotions, which are the, probably the best way, the first initial thing, but also we can look at our behaviors in life uh, and then we can find out what is coming originally from our thoughts, which is the spring, the source, the fountain of our emotions and of our behaviors. So beliefs are also a part of the thought, thoughts in our mind. So t our behaviors and our activity in life, our, how we deal with people and how we deal with life, um, our words, everything that we manifest, is all comes down to our thoughts and beliefs and perceptions, everything, attitude, mood, it's all in the... F it all is our mind or our thoughts. They're all part or categories of our mental um, state, our mind. So, so everyone, this is so empowering. Honestly, this is like change your life overnight. This will like, set you free. This will help your. This will help fix your relationship. This will help you to break up out of an abusive relationship if it's too much, too far, too bad. It'll help you leave the, the wrong job. It'll help you get the right job. It'll help you have a happier relationship. It'll help you to let go of the past, re-framework and recontextualize, tell a different story of your past. See the gift, make peace, understand, have acceptance, let go of the judgment. Forgiveness will come in. You'll maybe start to cry. You'll have emotional release, emotional healing. So many good things can come of this, what I'm talking about in this video. So many. It totally changed your life. You start to cry and let, you allow yourself to feel emotional. Like Don't try and let, avoid or suppress your emotions, but learn from them. And at the same time as validating and loving yourself, whatever arises, you can also then see if there's a, necessity, if there's a, a wish or a necessity to connect with the truth and you change your perceptions. Cause you know, sometimes we just we create constant suffering because we, we keep having certain mind activity. So the, step one is to love and accept your emotion as it is ex exactly in this moment. Cool. I've been thinking stuff. It's creating me miserableness. Awesome. I love my miserableness. I accept it. I love it. I embrace it. I validate it. Step two, a moment later, 10 seconds later, five seconds later, a minute later, an hour later, it's like, okay, I'm going to manifest new emotions now. I'm going to think differently. All at the same time, loving the existing emotions that have already arisen. No denial, no avoidance, no judgment of our emotions. Pure love and acceptance and embracing and then shifting also our mind to create nicer feeling ones as well at the same time. 
Okay, Cynthia says, I just want to keep my life light. Well, this is a perfect video to watch then, because it's totally he helping you have to find a more, a thought that's more relief, a more relief, relief inducing thought. That's all you need to do. Simple as that. You don't have to try and be perfect. You just have to go be better than you were before. That's all. Simple as that. It's very simple. What thought, what shift can I make within my, my, myself, mentally, that will make me feel a little bit better than I was a second ago? Simple as that. It's so easy. You don't have to put too much pressure on yourself, you know? I've given so many examples of how you can do this in different ways. So re-watch the video. If you want. Anyone, you're welcome. Melanie says, I love you too, Alan. Lifting you up with a big side of a hug. <laughs> Thanks, Melanie. Love you as well. <laughs> Carmel says, you're a lovely, lovely guy. Thanks. <laughs> you give offense when you take offense. Yeah, Cynthia says that. So yeah, so many people are getting offended, everyone. So we don't need to get so offended. And we, it's our perception that makes us so offended at everything, you know? Okay. Some people get offended if you yawn in public. Yeah, you can do anything. You can do anything, you can do nothing. And various people have different belief systems where they're going to get upset with you. So there's a saying, you can't please everyone all the time. It's impossible. So, Melanie, Melanie says, awesome downstream video. Love your videos and your pretty colored shirt. <laughs> thank you so much. Cynthia says, thank you. Okay, everyone. So I think that video is finished now. I think I've said and conveyed everything that I want to share. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching and feel welcome to share. And for one-to-one -one consultations and help and any of this stuff, healing, relationships, manifesting your dream life, uh, letting go of the past, letting go of blockages and manifesting and opening up to the, the life of your dreams, I'd love to do any help in that regard. And that's what I do, I work at. And I'm making a new book for 2018, which is gonna be really awesome. I'm really looking forward to it. Um, so yeah, I'll, Happy New Year, everyone. Happy 2018. And um, lots of love and gratitude. It's been really nice to connect with you today. <sighs> yeah, thanks. Love you. Have a great day. And I'll see you again another time. Peaceful blessings. Enjoy your day and enjoy nature. Live in a state of gratitude and appreciation. If you can, if you can keep focusing on what you have instead of what you don't have, that that's just a huge secret, everyone. That will change your life forever. So instead of focusing on what you don't have, like I don't have this amount of money, I don't have this house or car or job, focus on what you do have. I have an arm, I have a leg, I have a nose. I have nature, I have a mom or a dad or a family member. I have a friend, I have some clothes. I have a smile, I have a, hum a humor, I have a, m a mind, I have, I have an internet. Even if you like television programs that make you feel good, I have that. I have anything, I have a shower. I have some positive traits. They have positive traits. I try my best sometimes. They try their best. We're all just trying our best with what we have at the moment, everyone. Just got to be easy on ourselves and other people, you know. Love and compassion and forgiveness. Really easy. Try and get as easy and fast as possible. Okay. Okay, take care, everyone. Thanks. Love you. Hugs. Carmel says, I have two arms, aren't I lucky? Really lucky. It's so good to have arms, everyone. I can't believe it. Like, I personally don't have the health that I really would, would, would aspire for the most. No way. No way near. But I have so much better than I have before. Oh, I have stuff. I have two eyes. Everything's going to be okay, everyone. Everything's going to be okay, okay? Everything's okay. Whatever was, was. Whatever is, is. And whatever will be, will be. And we're always going forward in life. Whatever it is, has changed now already. We're going forward, everyone. It's like the beauty of life. <laughs> okay, take care. <laughs> I'm enjoying not ending this video. I just, I don't know, I just feel something where I just feel like, you know? I don't feel the, the full readiness to say goodbye for some reason. I just feel like maybe a little bit more to come, like I just said, so that's good. But I think it's really time to go now, everyone. So, thanks for watching, okay? Denise says, love you, hugs. Lo thanks, Denise, love you too. I've totally noticed your vibration changing, by the way, in the last few months to a year, or even like the last few weeks. Like, Denise, you're so much more uplifted and positive and loving. 
um, and I really see your energy towards me and kindness. So thanks so much for all your love and light and love and light energy. So lovely. Thanks, Denise. Cynthia says I love your live streams. Thanks, Cynthia. Me too. Uh, Harmony says for eight months I was in a wheelchair. Now I can walk fine. I'm grateful every day for my legs. That's so special and so precious. So true, you know. I, I had a similar experience. One of the things that happens is we don't appreciate what we have until it's gone or until it's gone away. And that's the wake-up call. But if we, if, we, if we choose to become more of a deliberate thinker, a deliberate manifester, through careful, deliberate thoughts and thinking and focusing, we get to practice our thoughts. We get to actually practice appreciation and gratitude too, which is one of the thoughts that exist. So when we focus on things to appreciate and grateful for, we can actually really feel fantastic for what for stuff before we and we don't have to lose it then. Also, we don't have to lose it to learn that lesson, so to speak. Okay, so that's nice. Carmel says, "Where can I get your herbs from?" Well, my my herbs shop called HigherSelfHerbs.com. www.HigherSelfHerbs.com. Yeah. Okay. Bye, everyone. Lots of love to your health, happiness, and herbs. <laughs> to your health and happiness. See you again.